The world didn't end once. It ended five times before anyone even learned to write. Entire civilizations erased in hours. Millions died. Countries swallowed whole. The survivors couldn't explain what happened, so they turned it into mythology. But the evidence, it's still here. Buried, waiting, proven. And what we're about to uncover will make you realize we're not safe. We never were. Today, we're diving into five apocalypses that sound like ancient myths, but actually happened. Cities vaporized in seconds. Entire nations drowned overnight and the terrifying part. Scientists can prove every single one. Welcome to Lost Truths, where we uncover the mysteries history tried to bury. And if you love this kind of content, do me a favor and subscribe right now. We drop videos like this every single week that'll completely rewire how you see the ancient world. Now, here's the thing. We think of apocalypses as something waiting in the future. Climate change, nuclear war, asteroid impacts, but civilization has already ended multiple times and the survivors. They turned these disasters into legends so terrifying we're still telling them thousands of years later. Let's start with the most controversial one, Tol Elhamam, the fire that fell from the sky. The Bible says God destroyed two cities with fire and brimstone. Everything burned, every one died. Lot's wife looked back and turned into a pillar of salt. For centuries, people assumed it was just a morality tale, a warning about sin and punishment. Then, in 2021, archaeologists found something that changed everything. They were excavating Tal El Hammam, an ancient city near the Dead Sea in Jordan. Bronze Age settlement, thriving metropolis, advanced for its time, and then, suddenly, around 1650 BC, it just stopped existing. The city was flattened in an instant. Here's what they found in the ruins. Pottery melted on the outside, but not the inside. That only happens above 2900 degrees Fahrenheit. Building materials turned to glass. Human skeletons with blast injuries. And a layer of ash and destruction material five feet thick, covering everything like a blanket of death. No army did this. No earthquakes. No volcano. The evidence points to an airburst. A meteor exploding in the atmosphere, directly above the city, with the force of a nuclear bomb. The shockwave would have been traveling faster than the speed of sound. You wouldn't hear it coming. You'd just be vaporized. The blast was so powerful, it salted the earth for generations. Nothing could grow. The entire region became a dead zone. Sulfur and salt deposits everywhere you looked. Sound familiar? Now, we can't definitively prove this was the biblical Sodom and Gomorrah, but the timing, the location, and the destruction pattern they match perfectly. And if you think a meteor strike sounds bad, wait until you hear about the next one. Because what happened to these people didn't take seconds. It took weeks of pure terror, and there was absolutely nowhere to run. Almost every ancient culture on Earth has a flood story. The Sumerians? The Greeks? The Mesopotamians? Indigenous peoples across different continents who never met each other. That's weird. Right? Why would civilizations separated by thousands of miles, who never had contact, all tell the exact same story about a catastrophic flood? Because they all witnessed the same catastrophe. Around 5600 BC, the Black Sea wasn't a sea at all. It was a freshwater lake. Smaller, lower, peaceful. People lived on the shores, fished in the waters, built villages, raised families, lived completely normal lives. Then the Ice Age ended. Sea levels around the world began rising, and the Mediterranean Sea began pushing hard against a natural land dam where modern-day Turkey sits. For weeks, maybe months, that geological barrier held back trillions upon trillions of gallons of salt water. Until one day, it didn't. When that dam finally broke, the Mediterranean didn't trickle in gently. It exploded through the gap with the force of 200 Niagara Falls. Think about that for a second. The water came so fast, so violently, people couldn't outrun it. Entire settlements vanished in hours. The Black Sea rose hundreds of feet. The shoreline moved miles inland every single day. You'd go to sleep and wake up with the ocean 
At your doorstep, Robert Ballard, the oceanographer who found the Titanic, discovered evidence of this catastrophe. He sent submarines down and found ancient shorelines deep underwater, preserved buildings, stone tools, clear signs of human habitation, all drowned under 500 feet of water. This flood didn't cover the whole planet, but to the people living there, it was their whole world, and it ended in a single generation. The survivors scattered in all directions. They carried the story with them. And over thousands of years, that story evolved. It became Noah's Ark, the Epic of Gilgamesh, Deucalion's Flood, different cultures, different names, same nightmare. Now, at least the survivors of that flood knew what hit them. They saw the water coming. They understood it was a flood. But imagine waking up one morning and your entire country is just gone. Not destroyed, not conquered, gone. Erased from the map, like it never existed. That's what happened next. Doggerland, the land that vanished overnight. Pull up a map of Europe right now. Look at that gap between Britain and mainland Europe, the North Sea. 10,000 years ago, that wasn't water that was land, a massive country larger than modern Britain itself. Rolling hills, wide rivers, dense forests, and thousands of people live there. We call it Dogerland. During the last ice age, sea levels were 300 feet lower than today. Britain wasn't an island. It was connected to Europe by this huge stretch of habitable land. You could literally walk from London to Amsterdam without getting your feet wet. And Dogerland, it was the center of everything. A fertile paradise where hunter-gatherers thrived for thousands of years. Then the ice started melting. Slowly at first, over centuries, the sea crept inch by inch. Valleys became bays, rivers became straits. Low-lying areas flooded, but the people adapted. They moved inland, built new settlements. They kept living their lives. They thought they had time until around 6200 BC, when everything changed in a single night. Off the coast of Norway, an underwater landslide of unimaginable scale triggered one of the largest tsunamis in human history, the Sturega Slide. Thousands of cubic miles of sediment collapsed into the deep ocean all at once. The wave that followed was over 80 feet tall. It raced across the North Sea at hundreds of miles per hour, and it hit Doggerland in the middle of the night when everyone was asleep. Entire communities were wiped out instantly. The few survivors who made it to higher ground watched as their entire world disappeared beneath the waves. And the sea never went back down. Fishermen discovered evidence of this catastrophe completely by accident. Trawling nets in the North Sea kept pulling up strange things. Ancient tools, carved bones, mammoth, tusks, artifacts from a civilization that shouldn't exist there because it's all underwater now. Hundreds of feet down, the Gurlan didn't sink slowly over generations. The tsunami finished in one night, and the survivors, they retreated to Britain, which was now an island for the first time, cut off from the mainland. Isolated, alone. Imagine going to sleep in your home and waking up drowning, then watching your entire country disappear. Your home, your history, your people, your past all erased by water, and knowing you can never go back. But, here's the thing, at least Dogerland was a one-time catastrophe. It happened, and then it was over. The next apocalypse on our list, it never stopped. It's still happening today, and it's killed hundreds of thousands of people across a thousand years. With no end in sight, Namazu, when the Earth began to move, Japanese mythology talks about Namaz, a giant catfish living deep beneath the islands. When it thrashes and writhes in anger, the earth shakes. Earthquakes happen. Tsunami form. On the surface, it's just ancient folklore. A way to explain natural disasters, but dig deeper, and you realize that Japanese weren't being superstitious. They were describing something very real, and very, very deadly. For thousands of years, Japan has sat directly on top of four massive colliding tectonic plates. The Pacific Plate, the Philippine Plate, the Eurasian Plate, the North American Plate, 
all for grind against each other constantly beneath the islands. This creates what geologists call a subduction zone. One plate slides violently under another. Pressure builds and builds and builds for decades, sometimes centuries. And when will it be released? The results are apocalyptic. The Jogan earthquake in 869 AD was one of the worst in recorded history. A 9.0 magnitude quake struck off the northeastern coast. It triggered a tsunami so massive, so powerful, it traveled six miles inland, not 600 feet. Six miles, entire villages were erased in minutes. Thousands drowned. The survivors described the ocean rising up like a mountain and falling on the land like the hand of an angry god. Written records from that time say the wave was so tall it swallowed entire forests. When the water finally receded, there was nothing left. No buildings, no people, just mud and bodies and silence. But here's what's absolutely terrifying. Japan didn't learn, or maybe they just forgot. Over the centuries, in 2011, the Tohoku earthquake hit the exact same fault line, same type of quake, same massive tsunami. And despite modern technology, despite concrete seawalls and sophisticated warning systems, it still killed over 18,000 people. The ancient Japanese understood something we keep forgetting. Their islands were alive. The earth beneath them was restless and angry. They personified it as Namazu, because that was the only way to make sense of the inexplicable. The Earth shouldn't move like that. But in Japan, it does. And it will, again. Think about that. We just watched this happen in 2011. With all our modern science and warning systems, and it still killed 18,000 people. And that's just one country. One fault line, one geological curse that keeps repeating. But the final apocalypse on our list it didn't pick one country. It didn't target one region. It hit everywhere. All at once. Europe, Asia, the Middle East. Every civilization. Every empire. All brought to their knees at the exact same time. Ragnarok. The year the sun went dark. Norse mythology describes Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods. The end of everything. A winter that lasts four years, with no summer in between. The sun turns black. The stars disappear from the sky. The world tree shudders. Everything dies. It sounds like pure fantasy, like something out of a movie. Except in 536 AD, it actually happened. That year, a volcanic eruption in Iceland ejected so much ash and debris into the atmosphere, it literally blocked out the sun. Not for days. Not for weeks. For 18 months straight, the sky stayed dark. Temperatures dropped globally. Summer never came. Crops failed across three entire continents. Europe, Asia, the Middle East. All starving at the same time. Historians now call 536 AD the worst year to be alive in human history. The Byzantine historian Procopius, who lived through it, wrote that the sun gave no more light than the moon. That it seemed like the world was ending. Crops wouldn't grow. Animals died. People began starving by the millions. Then came the plague. The Justinian plague swept across the weakened, starving populations. It killed half of Europe. Half. Entire cities were emptied. Bodies piled in the streets faster than they could be buried. Empires collapsed. The Western Roman Empire never recovered. Trade routes vanished overnight. Cities that had stood for centuries were abandoned. Knowledge was lost. Libraries burned. Civilization regressed by centuries in a single generation. And the people living through it. They genuinely thought it was the end of the world. Because for them, it was. Modern science confirms every detail. Tree ring data from around the world shows a sudden, dramatic drop in growth. In 536 AD ice core samples drilled from Greenland to contain volcanic ash. From that exact year, preserved in the ice like a time capsule of the apocalypse. This wasn't mythology. This was a real, documented, global catastrophe. And the Norse people who survived it, they turned it into Ragnarok. The story of the world ending in fire and ice and endless darkness. 
because that's exactly what they witnessed. So here's what keeps me awake at night. Every single one of these apocalypses, from Sodom to Ragnarok, has one thing in common. The people living through them had no idea it was coming. They were just living their normal lives, going to work, raising families, making plans for the future. And then, in an instant, everything ended. We look at these ancient stories and think, that was then. We're smarter now. We have technology. We have warning systems. We're safer. But are we really? We're not safer. We're just living in the gap between disasters. Yellowstone is still an active super volcano. The San Andreas Fault is still building pressure. Asteroids still pass close to Earth every year. History doesn't repeat itself exactly, but it absolutely rhymes. And the next apocalypse, it won't sound like ancient mythology. It'll sound like breaking news. So let's recap what we just covered. Five apocalypses that actually happened. Sodom and Gomorrah, vaporized by a meteor airburst that turned the city to glass, Noah's flood. The Black Sea catastrophically flooded when the Mediterranean broke through. Daggerland, entire country drowned overnight by one of history's largest tsunamis. Namazu Japan's thousand-year cycle of earthquakes and tsunamis that never ends. And Ragnarok, the year the sun disappeared and the ancient world collapsed into darkness. All real. All proven by science. All absolutely terrifying. If this video changed how you see ancient history, hit that like button right now. And if you haven't subscribed to Lost Truths yet, what are you waiting for? We're digging up the mysteries history tried to bury every single week. You don't want to miss what's coming next. Speaking of which, next time we're covering something even stranger. An ancient civilization that vanished without a trace and left behind technology we still can't explain today. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss that one.